Is the 101 in 2024 drafts more complicated than it seems? How high will C.J. Stroud take Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and the Houston Texans in uh, next season? And what are you doing with the Buccaneers in the FFPC Never Too Early Best Ball Tournaments? Plus, the 2023 FFPC Never Too Early Superflex Best Ball Tournament number three, fifth place finisher, Danelle Anthony, will make us think hard about Rushy Rice, Tony Pollard, and much more. We've got a great show for you. Farrell Elliott is here. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Can't stand the pressure. I've seen greater men than these lessons. Broadcast live and heard around the world. You are now watching the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. Welcome to the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com with your hosts Eric Balkman and Farrell Elliott. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for analysis from the best players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Farrell Elliott. Solace in the scripture, are we not all our father's sons? I became a man, nobody ever told me what a man was. Thank you, Rob. Greetings and salutations to all of you, Balkaholics and Ferreliacs. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com. I am, of course, your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman. My co-host is indeed the uh, definitive commissioner of fantasy football, one Farrell Elliott. Uh, coming up on tonight's show, Farrell and I uh, will hash out what we think of the 2024 New York Jets players for fantasy purposes before uh, the 20, uh, before the uh, FFPC Never Too Early Superflex Best Ball Tournament number three, uh, fifth place finisher, Danelle Anthony is going to join us to talk a little bit about Cooper Cup, Trey Benson, Florida State guy, man, after my own heart. We'll talk about him as well as much more for everyone drafting right now in the FFPC Never Too Early Best Ball Tournaments. And by the way, as long as we're talking about that, you can go to myffpc.com right now to play in both the FFPC Best Ball Tournament and the FFPC Never Too Early Superflex Best Ball Tournament. Both these tournaments will uh, have been open for the last few weeks. They're going to close prior to the NFL draft on April 25th. They're going to follow best ball slim rules. No kickers, no defenses. 20-round draft, 14-week regular season, single-week elimination playoffs from weeks 15 through 17. You can play with a 30-second, 60-second, two-hour, or six-hour clock. So four different uh, clocks to choose from as far as what you want for per pick. Um, and you can take your shot at a $25,000 grand prize for just $125 right now. That's in the uh, standard um, Never Too Early Best Ball Tournament. And a $10,000 grand prize will be what is awarded to first place in the $35 Never Too Early Superflex Best Ball Tournament. Um, again, the people you're drafting against are drafting, they're, they're drafting prior to April 25th, like everyone else. Nobody is drafting in this tournament in June, July, August, September, nothing like that. Just go to myffpc.com to, to do that. And while you're at it, while you're there, uh, we have plenty of FFPC Dynasty Orphan teams there as well. So if you want to play fantasy football every single day of the year, we, we got the final game of the season coming up on Sunday, and we won't get any meaningful football until September. That's when the points start counting again. But you can start counting uh, how many juggernauts you're building with the FFPC. Get your Dynasty Orphans now, myffpc.com. Numerous squads have already had their 2024 entry fees lowered. If you go to myffpc.com and click on the Dynasty uh, uh, from the drop down menu, you're going to uh, see a ton of orphans that are heavily discounted, some as little as $1. Myffpc.com is where to check that out. Want to welcome in a very busy guy this weekend. He is the commissioner of the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship and uh, the commissioner of the KFFSC, uh, a, an organization I will be drafting in tomorrow night at midnight. Very excited to do that. Please welcome back my co host. Farrell Elliott. Farrell, welcome in. Happy Super Bowl weekend, man. Valky, there's nothing I would rather be doing than planning for our third annual big Super Bowl party. I got Jeff Joaquin in the house. I've got all your uh, all your contemporaries from fantasy football that are here drafting. They love the fact that you're involved. They dislike the fact that you are not here in person because when you are here, you bring things together. You're a very magical person. And you know what? You're 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 more you're more loving of, of orphans than Bean Crosby was back in his uh, day of uh, playing father or O'Brien or whatever the hell it was. You know, I mean, and you're getting it done. And, you know, it's great. 
It is great. Uh, and if you had Bing Crosby reference on your FF or in your HSFFO or bingo card, cross that off because cross we already that did that. six minutes in. into the show. We love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we're doing tonight. Um, for anybody who's interested, Farrell, uh, are there any online options for the big game um, uh, drafts that are going on in Louisville this weekend? Bucky, they should join you in consultation as we prepare to welcome both them and you to the 2025 draft. Uh, it's going to be very exciting to have you back here. Super Bowl weekend 2025. Yeah. We are completely sold out. Every house, uh, every seat has a football player, uh, fantasy football player of superlative nature, anxious to start and set this year's draft values. And these are some exciting rookies in there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some guys we'll talk about a little later tonight. You know, I'm on the clock, Balky. I am drafting in the never too early. And um, eight rounds in, I'm pretty proud of my team coming out of the number two position, I think, or three, something like that. I, uh, I'm i proud of you, too, uh, for doing that. How's that. The team, you said, it looks good. It's balanced. It's It's got a good shot. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to draft a quarterback. Uh, okay. We're in the eighth round, and uh, I was I, I was wavering on a quarterback at the turn, and I did not. I went two running backs, and uh, uh, and the quarterbacks didn't disappear as quickly as I thought they would. The guys that I want are still on the board. So, uh, yeah, so far, so good, falling into place. And, you know, I'm a sucker for the tight ends, Balky. I've already got two in the first seven picks, uh, Ingram and um, – some other guy's supposed to catch a lot of passes. <laughs> That's always good when you get the guys that are going to catch a lot of passes. They're supposed yeah. to collect as many as those as you can. Um, there's a shortage of running backs in um, FFPC and KFFSC drafts this year. But if you're lucky enough to have the one-on-one, you have the opportunity this weekend in the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship as well as the FFPC Never Too Early Best Ball Tournaments to draft Christian McCaffrey, who was recently named the Associated Press Oh, I can say Associated Press since we're on the internet. On my local terrestrial show, I can't say Associated Press. I caught myself, but it doesn't matter. The, the AP Associated 20, Press. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The 2023 Offensive Player of the Year goes to Christian McCaffrey. Uh, 1,459 rushing yards, 14 touchdowns, 67 catches, 564 yards, and seven touchdowns uh, mm. receiving. He set an NFL record when he um, scored 17 straight uh, scored touchdowns 17 straight games. That started back in the 2022 season. He also led the league not only in rushing yards but yards from scrimmage, just over 2,000. That's the second time in his career he's done that. Um, the question here is Farrell, and I know he's he's got an ADP of 101. In fact, uh, he has slipped to the 103 in a couple of drafts in the never too early. And by the way, I'm, I'm looking at the ADP at fantasymojo.com at fantasy mojo on X Darren Armani, the Godfather of the pros versus Joe's. Uh, anytime I cite ADP, it's through his service. If you're playing in the FFPC, get a subscription at fantasymojo.com. There have been a couple of drafts, um, in the last, uh, couple of weeks. It looks like, yeah, roughly last few weeks, Justin Jefferson has gone one Oh one. CD Lamb has gone 101, but on average, McCaffrey is the 101. Farrell, you had the second spot. I'm assuming McCaffrey wasn't available, but if you did have the first overall pick, is it a slam dunk to take McCaffrey, or is this more nuanced, uh, a more nuanced decision this year? Well, of course he is. And it was a little bit nuanced last year. Matter of fact, I sat through one draft where I saw him still on the board at the sixth position, you know, almost had a heart attack. Um, <laughs> overthinking it, I made the mistake in one draft of, uh, of uh, taking Austin Eckler in front of him. And that ruined my season because the team did win the, the 12 team league and went on to place uh, right outside the top 100 in the FFPC and you, you think, well, what's, what's the difference? That's a lot of points you were talking about. And those, mm -hmm. you know, he caught seven touchdowns this year. That's an outlier. But when you think about the way he is released in the pattern with, with Purdy and the wheels that he's got and the fact that he stays healthy, that's good. He's had previous years where I think he's caught as many as five or six. I don't necessarily say that even though that that's the best number of his career, I think it's the best number of his career. Um, I don't necessarily say that we will be seeing anything uh, that doesn't approach that number this coming year. And, you know, Balky, it hasn't been that long that he was a Carolina Panther, but do you ever – I can vaguely remember him in that uniform, you know? Yeah. It, it's just – yeah. This was his very first year um, 
as a, a full season as a San Francisco 49er. And we saw the benefits of that. I, like I always say, I'm, I'm a weak man. I'm not going to think too hard on this. If I get the one one on Saturday night, for instance, in the KFFSC or in any of my drafts going forward, as it stands right now, I can't get away from Christian McCaffrey. And, and I think that uh, I would encourage everybody else to do the same. Um, also at the NFL Honors uh, Award Show, C.J. Stroud was named mm -hmm. the AP Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, he had one of the best rookie seasons at any position in recent memory. He was the number two overall pick. 4,100 uh, passing yards, 23 touchdowns, five picks, just five picks on the season. The yeah. Texans last year went 3-13-1, and, and then they made the playoffs this year going 10-7. and seven. They won the division, first time in the playoffs in four years, I believe, four years, yeah. Um, C.J. Stroud, you know, we can talk, we can mention the word MVP with them for 2024. I think that's, that's worth uh, mentioning. Um, but when you look at where he's going in drafts, Farrell, Quarterback six right now. Now he's going in the mid sixth round behind Allen Hurts, Jackson Mahomes, Anthony Richardson, and him are kind of going back to back. And then you get into Burrow and Prescott and Fields and Herbert and some of these other veterans here. CJ Stroud, I know you like your Texans. Are you comfortable taking him in the mid sixth round ahead of all those other guys that he's going in front of right now? Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I must confess, um, foolishly, I, I, he was one of the quarterbacks that I took uh, last year in, in the dynasties. And I let him go on a team or two because I, I thought, I thought, uh, you know, it was between he and Jordan love. So I stayed with, uh, I stayed with Jordan love. Uh, okay. So what's your, the, the pieces around him are maturing with him. And that's what I like Collins from week one to the end of the season show leaps and gains of his uh, the quality of receiver he is uh, in the NFL now is, is fantastic. Dell has been uh, set aside with injury, but he'll bounce back and it played better than a third round pick. Singletary's becoming the back we want him to be. And, you know, I love Schultz at the tight end and he dropped a couple passes in the playoffs and he probably can't wait for the season to start where he won't drop anymore. I love this football team. I love it for fantasy football. Um, it, it's a it's a great situation, and you should push all the Texans up your board. I push them up your board for sure, and that's something that we will definitely be doing uh, in 2024. be interesting to see how high they go uh, in drafts this mm -hmm. year, because I think we've only scraped the surface. I think they're going to go higher. Mm -hmm. um, Jim Rappaport from the NFL Network has reported that the Buccaneers have, quote, the inside track to sign Baker Mayfield, uh, the um, uh, camp for Baker Mayfield wants him to um, not only uh, return to Tampa, but they also want to bring, or he also wants Mike Evans to come back to Tampa as well. well Thirty-five sure. million in camps and cap space for Tampa. It sounds like Mayfield is going to be coming back uh, to to the Buccaneers this year. Um, and if that is the case, Farrell, I, I you know, Superflex, I guess we can talk about him. He's quarterback 23 right now. But, man, if Mike Evans comes back as well and you're going to bring Chris Godwin back, who is supposed to be playing in the slot a little bit more this year as well, I mean, it could be wheels up for Buccaneers, especially in that division. There were some things that Baker Mayfield corrected. We've talked about it on the show, but it bears repeating again with the, with Liam Cohen and what's happening down at Tampa. And there were things that – that I saw different. I saw a different approach. Sometimes the same results, but a different approach uh, when he was an LA Ram. That time that he spent in LA was very, very good for him. And the time to have those receivers that really outperformed in fantasy due to the fact that Mayfield had a stronger season uh, this year than we expected, and the running back was a big part of that. Um, it, the offensive coordinator and he teamed up in Los Angeles. I like that guy. I've known, you know, he's been in Louisville once. That's when I met him. He was an Alabama Viper. I think they were out of Huntsville. They came up here to play the Louisville Fire. And that was his one year as a player. I think he could understand that his future was in coaching. He's been at it a long time. He towers over Baker Mayfield. He's about six foot three, Cohen is. But, you know, at the end of the day, what, what you're looking at with Baker Mayfield is, is a player that, has had so many chances and I think he's finally getting it and he's getting it because of the talent that he's got around him and the fact that he has uh, finally met someone who can unlock and work with that skill set to its uh, fruition and highest possibility. So I, I like Baker Mayfield now as a draft pick, as your second 
third quarterback. I don't really understand the super flex. I guess you just keep you, you start two quarterbacks. I know, and if you want to do that, uh, the, the, I guess the quarterbacks fly off the board. Look at there, Hudson Kern Reeves in the room. They fly off the board, and uh, you know he's been gone. Hudson Kern Reeves has been gone. And, and then I said that the Kentucky Super Bowl event is a sellout, and he shows back up. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing so how that works. On there. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing we have, um, we we have uh, Danelle Anthony waiting in the green room right now to talk about his finish in the never too early. Uh, Danelle would never treat us like that, Bob. No, he would not. He absolutely no. would not. Um, he's going to talk about his performance last year as well as drafts uh, going forward this year as well. Um, before we get to him, Aaron Rodgers was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He said that his Achilles feels good and he can do everything but uh, sprint at a top speed. This according to Rich Simony, uh, who covers the New York Jets, I believe for ESPN. I could be wrong about that. Uh, Rodgers was talking about coming back in December. That never happened. I mean, you could blame the Jets' performance on the field as much as Rodgers' injury for you know something like that. Um, but everything we've heard, they're going good. Um, it, 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 it sounds like he's going to give it a go. And the Jets won seven games without him last year, Farrell. Um, the great thing about Aaron Rodgers here is not only can you get him as quarterback 22 in the never too early tournament right now, but you can, I mean, this is going to improve guys like Garrett Wilson. It's going to improve guys like Brees Hall. This is, you know, a, a rising tide will raise all ships. Aaron Rodgers could be that rising tide. And as much as we want to be down on the Jets after what we saw last year, it could be a big season for everybody in gang green town. I agree. Garrett Wilson can take a big roll up. And I love this quote. Uh, does, he can't run at full speed. Well, I don't think he's ever run at full speed. If, we're talking about full speed for him, but it, you know, but bulky, I see to you in your terrestrial radio show in Southwest East uh, Wisconsin, <laughs> because the, uh, um, you know more about Aaron Rodgers than anyone. And you know, who knows the, the Next in line are all the Green Bay Packer fans that know about that. I mean, you guys, you guys know it, and, and there's nothing I can say about it. But, yes, if he's a quarterback for every game for the Jets, those Jets players are going to score fantasy points, and it's going to be a mighty fine time. Uh, I want to apologize. I know my internet is not great tonight for whatever reason. Uh, thank you, Farrell, for trying to help me through it. We will, we will power through, um, and to help us do that tonight, we're going to welcome in uh, tonight's guest, ladies and gentlemen. He is a previous multi-league winner in the Fantasy Football Players Championship. He finished fifth overall in the 2023 FFPC Never Too Early Superflex Best Ball Tournament number three. Please welcome onto the show, Mr. Danell Anthony. Danell, welcome aboard. Happy Super Bowl weekend to you. Thanks for doing the show, man. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Well, coming in loud and clear, baby. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks for having me on. This yeah, is well, exciting. We're excited to have you on for, for Super Bowl Friday, too. I mean, this is basically our last show uh, before the NFL season hangs it up. I'm kind of curious, uh, when you are not doing so well in these FFPC uh, tournaments, what are you doing for a living, Danelle? So, um, I, I live in New York. Well, I lived in New York my whole life. I just moved to Stanford. So, this is, this is new for me. You're in um, Connecticut. Yeah, I'm in Stanford. Wow. Yep. Um, so I'm a accountant. I'm a CPA, as as you could see from my uh, my tagline name. Mm -hmm. um, I work at a macro research firm uh, in the city, uh, and then I have my own LLC where uh, I have a few clients that I do consulting for. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a big math guy. I love numbers. Um, been playing fantasy for years since. Like I guess I started. On like Yahoo baseball, like the early two mm. thousands, and then got into basketball, and finally got into football, and like I, I guess I was successful in in home leagues for some years. And then I was like, you know what? Let me let me look for some some higher stakes. Um, then I came across you guys' site, and yeah, I just I just really love the interface. I love the format, the tight end premium grade. The rest like is the rest is history. The you know and uh, Balky, we we've got to get Danell and, and Danny Mueller in the same room. Danell and Dan, we got to get those guys in the same room. It'd be like an explosion of numbers just cascading. <laughs> yeah. You could probably see the numbers floating yeah. over their heads. And Danell, I'm so glad to know that you're involved in this industry because I have two shoe boxes full of papers 
here that I'll be sending your way now that I have your, because I'm going to need a little help as we, as we move towards April. Somebody that didn't need any help was you picking rookie receivers and or, uh, young receivers last year. Nico Collins and Rashi Rice. Uh, what did – we know what happened last year. Let's talk about this year. I, I had a close eye on the, the senior bowl. Uh, the, the wide receivers that I liked going in confirmed the reason I was liking them. Uh, will you be aggressive with young wide receivers this year, and, and who who is catching your eye early? Yeah, I guess like at this time of the year, um, I'm not a scout, so I, I usually do it based off. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, that's where I get a lot of my info from. I look at like mm -hmm. super like mock drafts, uh, but heard like great things about like Lad McConkey and like mm -hmm. Roman Wilson so far. Mm -hmm. So those are like the kind of shots I'll take because last year with Rasheed Rice, we we didn't know he was going to land in the on Kansas City at this point. So you take shots at athletic rookies and, and hope hope they hit or land in a good spot. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the never-too-early ADP data right now. Lad McConkey, you're looking at uh, that guy. The receiver uh, is not going until oh, – I just had it in front of me. Wide receiver 63. You can get him in the 15th round. And then Roman Wilson, wide receiver 75. He's going even later uh, out, of, uh, you know, out of Ann Arbor is, is where Wilson's coming from. So these are guys that you can take shots on and see what happens in, in, yep, uh, for in sure. 2024 for sure. Um, I want to uh, to ask you uh, specifically about the never too early uh, Superflex Best Ball Tournament this year, Danelle. I noticed mm -hmm. one of your drafts. You have the third overall pick. You take Lamar Jackson, and then no argument from me. You're going to take Justin Fields at the two ten here. Yeah. The question here is more of a strategy thing because you placed very well in the Superflex tournament last year. How do you know when to grab a quarterback and how do you know when to grab a running back or receiver when you're talking about the second round, the third round of these drafts? Because the, I, I think it's kind of a it, it's a sweet spot type thing where you, you really got to know what to do. And I think it confuses a lot of people when, if they should take their second quarterback or if they should be going with with a stud running back or receiver there instead. Yeah, it's it's, it's really a fun format. Uh, you have a lot of uh, options that you could you could take. I tend to, if I have an early pick, I will go for one of the stud quarterbacks. If I'm later in the first round, I will probably go for the elite running back or wide receiver. Um, and then probably peer the running back and wide receiver going into the early second round. Then probably round three or four, I'll look for a quarterback. If I still don't like the value, I'll wait. The, the draft I did last year, I think I took Derek Carr in round six mm -hmm. and then Anthony Richardson in round seven. Obviously, Richardson got hurt, but he he gave some boom weeks before he got hurt. Mm -hmm. And I took Tannehill probably round nine, and the, the team was still successful because I, I hit a lot early with the positional players. So in, in this current draft, early spot, I'm going to take the elite quarterback if it's available. I took Lamar Jackson, and I was just shocked to see Justin Field at 210, so I figured why not. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and when you get Lamar Jackson on your club, you want a Raider. You know, you get that vibe. So now you get Fields, future Raider Fields, to uh, – <laughs> I'm just filling out the newspaper <laughs> before they print them. Um, let's talk about an old-school player, super flex, main event, never too early. I don't care when you take him, you better take him. And Balky, I just checked. That is my other tight end in my first never too early, uh, wow. Travis Kelsey. Now, oh, yeah. Travis yeah. Kelsey, uh, there's been some interesting <laughs> – he's having an interesting year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, having a, yeah, great year. <laughs> you, you see what a finely tuned athlete could do with a week off because he looked like he was physically struggling. Then they get a week off. He looks like he's just right out of the gate. Just, just absolutely in perfect condition and ready to play. Uh, complete another season here as we move into the depth of the playoffs. I, I've noticed, and you can tell me if, if being a numbers guy, you can tell me if this is something you've noticed. But every year he catches in the nineties, he comes back the next year and catches about one ten. It's been that way for the last three or four years. Uh, yeah. That might be injury dependent. I don't, I don't know what it is, but. Um, 
I expect him, even at 34 years old, because he's a freak of an athlete and he wants to he wants to do this forever. Unlike <laughs> his brother, who did it for as long as he could do it and should yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts, are you going to be as bullish on Travis Kelsey? as I want to be. And I think we've got an opportunity, especially early to get him at a little bit of a bargain. Yeah. So I, I believe he's turning 35 this year, uh -huh. but you, he's just shown us in the playoffs that he still, he still got it. So I, I believe if he actually decides to continue to play, he's going to give it, a, give it his all. And, He's, he grabs 90 catches every year. So yeah, yeah, yeah. in tight end premium, I, I will just gobble up the reception. Then third round, Travis Kelsey is just too good to pass up on. And he knows where that end zone is, too. And, and you know, I was listening to you talk about how you got involved in fantasy football, and that's a great formula because obviously you have the platform of skills to be very, very successful. And then you – you beat your local leagues. You, you you were number one in your local leagues, and you started looking, and you started kind of – and now here you are on Balky's award-winning podcast where I just kind of hitchhike and join and then get out as we go down the road. Um, and, and what I want to ask you, you've, obviously you should be inspired to play more FFPC. We'll welcome you to travel from Connecticut to come to Kentucky and play. But I want to ask you something. Did the inspiration you received from this show – get you into that beard because that's a good looking beard. Balky <laughs> doesn't have people to come on the show with beards very often, but you got a good looking beard. You know, you both have got a nice, yeah, good looking yeah. fellas. I like hanging out with you. Make you I'm, look I'm doing what I can, but my beard isn't quite like that one. Well, it's a good beard. It's a good beard. Yeah, no, it, it took, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of work. <laughs> uh, much like, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, too, speaking of Kelsey, I was ready to say I'm off Kelsey for 2024, and then I saw what he has done in the playoffs so far, and I'm like, you know what? The 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 reports of Travis Kelsey's fantasy demise have been greatly exaggerated, oh, probably yeah. probably by me. Like, I helped those <laughs> along, and now I'm, I'm totally backing off on it, and as long as Mahomes is there and Kelsey's there, I got to see more of a sample size of him really stinking it up because he's not ready to do it. And like you said, Danelle, third round, Travis Kelsey, sign me up every time. Uh, let's yeah. Danelle, Bulky's beard has its own team. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's talk about another guy. And, and I think we might feel a little bit differently about Cooper Cup. Um, yeah. He went as your 410 pick in, in this draft that I'm talking about right now. This is about uh, three rounds before Puka Nakua, his real-life teammate. Now, yeah. how much of a value do you see Cooper Cup right now? Because he's got some stuff working against him. The soft tissue injuries, the fact that he's not the, the dominant ball hog tar or target hog that he has been in the past, and that he's getting up there in age as well. But Cooper Cup at the end of the fourth round, how strongly do you feel like, okay, I got to hammer that every time? Or was this just a case of like, oh, okay, this is too good to pass up. I got to pepper him throughout my teams. Tell us a little bit about Cooper Cup at the end of the fourth round. Yeah. Not as confident as third round Kelsey here, but <laughs> <laughs> at 410, he, he still had some monster games. And Puka was great. It was, I guess it's the opposite of Kelsey because Cup had a rough playoff game and Kelsey had a mon monster playoff game. But at 410, he still, I think he still has breakfast with Matthew Stafford. They're still, they're still buddies. Once he could stay healthy, he should still probably get to 80, 90 receptions and end the fourth round, beginning of the fifth round. That's still solid value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm talking about back to back older players, but it just. You, but, you, but here's the thing like, you know, this, like, like it's it's exciting to talk about the rookies and the younger players, but sometimes getting these older players right in drafts, whether fading them or targeting them, that can be the difference of winning a couple thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, you know, stuff like yeah. that. Like, so I, I think like and and obviously I think it, especially this time of year, guys, it's it's super fun to talk rookies and second year players. Mm -hmm. Um, but Kelsey and Cup you know, they're still relevant. They're still pushing onward here. Especially um, if you pair them with the late wide receivers, as we discussed mm -hmm. early on. So if they do get hurt or slow down, 
hopefully one of the late wide receivers you take is starting to get it going. I was talking to the football general manager today in, in my line of work, and, and we were talking about a player. And he said, Farrell, uh, this guy has a lot of currency in the building and respect from everyone. And so I think when Cooper Cup shows up, because he wasn't speaking against about Cup, but I mean, it's essentially the same thing. There's, there's tons of respect across that group. And defenses are going to attack the rounds much differently this coming year. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, a cup will benefit from that. And if they could get a dominant pass catching tight end in there, uh, I'm a big fan of Higby, but they paid him late. I don't know what their plans are of him. Well, and he tore his ACL too. Yeah. You know, so they've got. I don't know if the money is there in free agency or if they could go get you. You want to talk about rookies? Let's go talk about Brock Byers at tight end. But yeah, let's just, I think what they put around him and what they try to do with him. Yes. You've broken it down perfectly. Now 90 catches is hard to beat and he's going to get there. You know, that's what I think. Yeah. I think I um, to, to try to shift our focus here, from the old no, the more old players. No, <laughs> fair wants more old players. Well, I'll tell you what, this guy, I feel like Tony Pollard's old. I feel like we've been talking about him for like three or four years. You know, he's been such a polarizing guy. Yeah. He had Dave Turp on these airwaves saying, you know, oh. by, when they still had Elliot, he said if they could ever get rid of Elliot, oh, yeah, Pollard will be the 101. Take now, Elliot they, out and shoot him. Just yeah, shoot that, him. Didn't, that didn't happen, but but now, but I, I think this is interesting, Danell, because. At the 6'10", you get a guy in Pollard who was going in the first or second round last year. Yeah. And this is yeah. a player who, by his own admission in December, said he's only starting to feel just then that he was recovered from that injury. So wow. it took him basically the whole season. And this is a late season injury. He came back, and God bless him. He, he gutted out as much as he could. But now I'm thinking, okay, if it was just the injury holding him back, you get Tony Pollard at the end of the sixth round. I mean, I, I would imagine they're going to do something in Dallas to, to supplement the, the running game with Pollard uh, as well. Yeah. But how do you think he's going to do? I mean, you had to be I – mean, I'm looking at this draft. I'm like, God, I'm really thrilled for you to get Pollard that late. Yeah. I really I really felt like I was getting a lot of values at this point. And I wanted a running back, and I figured that I was going to take since, – since I'm in the third spot. And then the first and second spot, Mahomes and Josh Allen already went. And I drafted C.D. Lamb at the 103. So I'm like, I'm going to take a running back here to get my second running back after Barkley, and then I'm going to grab Dak. Mm -hmm. the, the running back options was Tony Pollard, Javante Williams, and James Conner. So I, I figured in the best ball format, Tony Pollard could have some spike weeks. Hopefully this year he catches a few more passes and those touchdowns from Zach, Dak would be great. And then I think in best, some people don't realize in a best ball tournament, when you're just trying to make it to the final mm -hmm. round, mm -hmm. the off game, if Dak has an off game, Tony, Tony Pollard might have a good game. And mm -hmm. then hopefully my backup quarterback does good enough to, to give me a solid you if you disrespect Pollard in these drafts you do it at your own risk and yeah. I that's important to remind us bulky because I, I often and and I, I really love Pollard as, as a player I just didn't see that disconnect between he and Elliot different kind of players same production yeah. you're right Pollard a better year coming up this year is what I think we're looking at I I think um um as much as much as the veterans we've been talking about tonight, we need to balance it out here. Danelle, let's talk about a rookie. Um, I'm a huge Florida State fan, have been a huge Florida State fan now for 30-plus years. Uh, Trey Benson, a guy who started off at Oregon, transferred to Florida State, had a really, really good season. And in a running back class where there's not – you know, quite frankly, there's a lot of people out there that will tell you the best running back in this class is Jonathan Brooks, and he's coming off a torn ACL. So you have a, a wide scope here of running backs that could do a lot of damage. Um, and quite frankly, there's not one or two that really stand out. Trey Benson could be that guy. What can you tell us about him? You took him at the 10-10 in this draft. Your thoughts on why he was the pick for you at that point? 
Oh, I love that value there. Um, I, again, I, I don't scout. So most of my information at this point is really different podcasts and experts in the industry. And a lot of people have been high on Trey Benson. Mm -hmm. So I know there's no Bijan in this class, no Brees or Gibbs, but I believe Benson has size and speed. Mm -hmm. And to get him at the 10 10, when he'd probably be a day round three pick at this point, a round three pick of running back is a probably round two from 10 years ago. So I'll take it and I, hopefully it pays off. Bonky, the professor's got a hell of a nice question in the chat room. Well, the chat is not refreshing for me. So you will have to. I will have to read it. Okay, I will perfect. read it because it, it, it you know, I want to know what you think about. Um, the Super Bowl, but I want I don't want just a standard prediction. And then the professor says the top playoff teams. This is the Balky, what's the name of our championship there? The, Which the playoff the, the playoff challenge? The world famous FFPC playoff challenge. It's world <laughs> famous. It looks yeah. like I figured it out by now. Okay. The top playoff teams in the world famous playoff championship have McCaffrey and Kelsey this week. So they're all bunched with McCaffrey and Kelsey. What Hudson wants to know is what player from either team has the best chance to outscore at least one of those. And I, I think he's going away from the quarterbacks. I think he's asking for a position, another position player. Best chance to outscore McCaffrey and Kelsey this week. I, I would go I, – I love Rasheed Rice, yeah. but I would probably go with Debo. And I, I – I don't think the the 49ers is going to give it all. They they had some tough playoff breaks and I think Debo is he's he's a man and he he's going to give it he's going to bring it. So he he will be the the guy other than those two that probably could score t multiple touchdowns. Yeah, well, you know we I'm sorry, Balky. Yeah, no, I was just I I just wanted to just uh throw my two cents in here. I think with the Chiefs if they do grind it out, then I think you could see a Pacheco type game. Although I don't think yeah. that's likely. I think if it's anybody from Kansas City, I'm with Danell. I think it's Rasheed Rice, San Francisco. I, I mean, I could see. We we talked to you just talked about Debo Samuel, which I totally you know because Shanahan ski, loves to scheme that guy into the game. So I could definitely see that happening. Um, the other guy I will mention is George Kittle. Um, Kittle's mm -hmm. the type of guy that um, will get your you know the three for thirty games, the two for fifteen. But then all of a sudden he'll have like an eight for a 90 and two touchdowns or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, so I could see that happening this game. But dollars to donuts, it's McCaffrey and it's Kelsey. I would say if I had to pick a secondary guy, it's Rice and it's Kittle um, with Debo. Oh, I want to throw another name where we can just confuse Hudson further. Brandon Ayuk, because I watch him catch balls that bounce off other players' helmets. So that was <laughs> that was just, you know. And he, Jeff Jaquin informed me this morning that it was Balky, the San Francisco 49ers, who defeated the Green Bay Packers in this run to the Super Bowl. And I know that because of that, you, you're holding a bit of a grudge against the, uh, against the 49ers, even though our beloved Drew Maselli and family and new addition to his family – We'll be rooting for the Niners this this weekend. So here's the sides that I need from you to nail. Who's who's going to win the game? How are they going to do it? It's all we need. We need the answer from you. So my wife is from Missouri, <laughs> so I I I feel like I have to back the Chiefs. You better. I mean Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. They they've been making magic, and I think this is to continue the legacy of he, he could chase down Brady at some point. So what yeah. city in Missouri is she from? Uh, Columbia. Oh yeah. The college girl right there. Tigers. Yeah. 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 Got <laughs> um, I, w I will say this, Farrell, just real quick. Um, my uncle moved out to uh, um, Silicon Valley in mm -hmm. Northern California mm -hmm. when he, this is like probably, I don't know, late seventies, um, probably maybe mid seventies. And ironically, even though I grew up in Northeast Wisconsin, the first jersey I ever had was a Joe Montana jersey, 49ers yep. Joe Montana, because he was he was always trying. This is back like when the Packers were stinking in the 80s when I was growing up. And he How was saying like, Christmas every year, 
49ers starters jack a uh, starter jackets 49ers sweatshirts joe monte like he was always trying to get me to adopt to become a niners fan so in my heart i think there is somewhere a section where i'd be rooting for the niners i have no dog in this fight i don't whoever wins god bless them they deserve it no grudge on, on this end if i held a grudge against everybody who beat the packers in the playoffs barrel Ooh, I'd, be yeah. leaving, I'd be leading a sad lonely life well no you're still that. holding one against mostert though well, that's different. I'll hold grudges said. against him. That, that, like Mostert and Kaepernick, too. I mean, like I still have nightmares of those guys just running wind sprints with the football down the field for the playoffs. That was that was the Packers rough. had the 49ers. It it looked like they had them. So that's a that's a tough one. That was yeah. a tough so, one. Hudson yeah. Kern Reeve asked a very important question, and we read him the roster of both teams. It was why I love the way we answered that. Is there any Jennings? Jennings Hudson could have a big game. Yeah, Jennings so number fifteen for the night. No, I, I'm facetious. I I would say Marquez Valdez Scantling, but he only catches one big pass a game, so he's not sure helped game. when he did. Yeah. You yeah. sure one, did help. One good pass a month. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did in Green Bay too. Ironically, if he uh, catches if he catches three, the Chiefs win by three touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> You're not lying, Farrell. You are not lying. Uh, Danelle, we got a couple of emails here for you that I want to get to. Um, this actually uh, touches on Barkley, a guy that we talked about a little bit earlier. Brian and Moreno Valley, is Saquon Barkley a good pick at the end of the second round in the never-too-early best ball tournament? Well, I believe that's where you did take him, and he, he has an ADP of 209. So it seems like everybody's uh, on board with Saquon Barkley in the late second. You're obviously on board with that as well. Yeah, late second Saquon, he's gonna get if especially if he stays in New York, he's gonna get a lot of touches. They will continue to feed him and use him up. So he's he got a couple. He's still got some prime years left. So I, I think at the end of the second round, I'll take a a workhorse running back. And and there's no concern with like him wearing down or anything like that. Like we're not we're not at to the point of his career where we have to worry about. Oh, there's a lot of mileage on those legs, right? We're not at that point yet, are we? He looked, he looked, he looked good this year, and with and the team wasn't good, so he still got, he still got it done on a bad team. So, if their team is any better next year, it could be even a better value. Hmm. Farrell, what be you, better? What, like, I, I feel like we had like just throughout drafting season in 2023, we didn't touch on Barkley a lot. Do you have any feelings of, of you know, because Barkley's definitely going lower? than he was last year, would you be looking at, because you're drafting in the never too early tournament as well, is that a spot that you'd be looking at Barkley? Yeah, I don't look away from Barkley. I want to I want to take part of him being uh, value. What's uh, what's Armani got him at? 210 is where he's going. All right, I beg your pardon, 209. Danell took 209. him at the 210, and he's got an energy in the 209. And I might find different or better options there. And I, and I think that a lot of the guys that are drafting him say, you know, I want – they probably have multiple teams and they want some representation of Barkley on their roster, but I, there's nothing about Barkley that I don't like. And, and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Timothy Haven says that Donnell knows his stuff and Timothy's right. Uh, and, and I'm willing to follow him on Barkley and uh, root for a player that deserves, uh, that deserves a good effort from the rest of the team around him. Danelle, just to piggyback on the Barkley conversation, just running backs in general, in the drafts that you've done this year, do you feel like they're going, they're being pushed down by drafters uh, and receivers and tight ends are going up a little bit? Yeah, definitely. And this is the best ball. I, I feel like a lot of people in best ball tournaments try to get at least one running back they can rely on that could fill that RB1 spot. And in like the Players' Championship or the main event, it's – I think the wide receivers are going to go up even further because you're more willing to take three, four wide receivers early because you feel like you could piece together your running backs later on. And the best ball is there, there's no waiver higher. So you, you, mm -hmm. I, I like to have at least one stud I could count on. Uh, one other email that we'll get to uh, Bill in Oak Brook, Illinois. Uh, hey, Danelle. Am I crazy to want to draft Brees Hall? Oh, oh God. this this goes back to what we were talking about earlier, Farrell. Am I crazy to want to draft Brees Hall over Christian McCaffrey this season? So <laughs> if you're going to do that, you'd probably be at the 101 because I don't think McCaffrey's slipping past the 101 in, in many drafts. We talked about how he went at the 103 in one draft 
But Danelle, like, this is not who would you take. This is, is he crazy to, to want to be <laughs> over yeah. McCaffrey? I'm going to say no, but I don't think I could do it. He's, he's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and, if, and you know what? If he does do that, I hope I'm drafting immediately behind him. Yes, I would love. Yeah, you know. Definitely. But our guest in now last week, Al Leach, who's had success in the league, he he had success by going receiver, receiver, receiver. And you know, I want to try it. I want to do it. It's it's difficult because you're giving up on you're really not your your number one running back, and then you're watching a few exciting tight ends go by. And I believe that. Uh, I've got a good eye for picking up receivers late in the single digits and early in the double digit rounds. And that it appears that, that you do too is, is, is there, you know, bulky, I know you've got some emails, but I just, I'm, I'm making my own email to Danelle right now. I, I want to throw some names at you. I want to throw. Okay. Uh, yeah. We had this question last week and I'm curious if I'm right about it. The first one is Bateman. And then I want to talk with you real quickly about what's going on with the Chargers, the variety of changes there, and your yeah. thoughts on Mike Williams. And then I want to ask you, in going into the Senior Bowl, Balky wanted me to give a receiver to look at. Jamari Thrash was my guy, and Jamari had a wonderful week at the Senior Bowl. And you may not have much to say about any of those names, but out of the three of them, we can talk about as much about – any of them that you want. So I, I'm a big Justin Herbert fan. Me too. And I think if they they may draft a wide receiver at 105, but pro, I, I'm thinking they might go Brock Bowers. Mm -hmm. And and if they go Brock Bowers and let Mike Williams or Keenan Allen go, I believe I might give Quentin Johnson another chance and. If you could get Quentin Johnson in round 13 or so, round 12, I think I would do it. But mm -hmm. it's a nervous click. for It's really a nervous click. You yeah. should get opportunities. And Justin Herbert's a stud. So and, and anything on Thrash? Anything on Thrash? Uh, I have not. Uh, I want you to. I want you. I invite you to study up, sir. And Balky. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the description, your question, what do you do for a living? And part of that description, I heard the word consultant. And Donnell has, has lived up to that definition because I'm coming up. I'm, I'm right. I'm, I'm on the clock now, and I need a receiver. So thank you very much for consulting. <laughs> uh, I, 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 outsource, I always love talking to smarter people than me. That gives me it gives me a wide pool. And uh, thank you for that input. Yeah. Thank um, you, guys. Absolutely. And Farrell, uh, before we let Danelle go, I am uh, actually fresh out of emails for Danelle. So we just, it, it's on you. Make that pick and ask the question or ask the question and make the pick. Whatever order you want to do it in here. Mm, yeah. Okay. I want, I want to ask the question. Um, give us somebody in 2024 that, and I think you might have, you might have just did it with Johnson. Give us somebody that... Um, you really, really are going to take a shot at. You want to have him on all your teams, and you believe he might be the the next Puka. And then um, give me somebody that you won't touch. And I can see you're a very, very positive person. But give me somebody that you just cannot stand having on your roster. Uh, I'll start with the negative. Okay. <laughs> Get it out of the way. I, I think I will be avoiding – T. Higgins this year. Mm. I don't, we first off, we do not know if he will be returning to the Bengals, and it just seems like he leaves games early. You just never know when to trust him, and he lets you down. So that's the player to avoid. Mm -hmm. The player to draft. I believe in, in my home leagues. I will be targeting Trey McBride. Yeah. Yeah. However, I think everyone in on the FFPC leagues are aware of how talented and dominant he could be. And he may go too early. If he doesn't, I will target Trey McBride. If I do not get him, I'm gonna stick with the tight ends and the tight end premium, and I will try to aim for Jake Ferguson late. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, spicy. Yeah, it, that, that's the thing. Is like non um, tight end premium. I, I feel like McBride can be can be gotten at a pretty good price, but yeah. tight end premium it's going to be a little bit tougher. Ferguson, I think, is an interesting name uh, to keep in mind going forward, especially uh, when we consider we don't exactly know what's going to be happening with Brandon Cooks. Um, Michael Gallup is another guy too, but we do know Prescott loves to throw it. And we do know Lamb and Ferguson made really good targets in 2023. A guy who had a really good season in 2023 is Donnell Anthony. Now, Donnell, before I let you go, um, let's give you a chance here to uh, to pump up the website here. Dadsarecool2.com. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that website. Yeah, so it's, uh, my, my best friend from growing up, who I actually still work with, um, he, he started this company, has a lot of cool clothing, a lot of cool gear. He, he's a, a dad with three daughters, mm. and him and his wife has, have a beautiful family. They started a beautiful clothing brand, um, and everyone should check it out. How old are the daughters? So I believe it's there's 16, 9, and 8. Mm, he's got a teenager, Balky, and he's still claiming to be cool. So, you know, <laughs> so, you know, if you can live through that, if you can keep your cool through that, I am buying some of your gear. Yeah, we, I, we I, would love that. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. You got hoodies and beanies and trucker hats, and, and I'm looking at the sitcom Dad's T-shirt with yeah. – uh, Reginald Bell Johnson and James Avery and Sherman Hemsley and Tim Reed on there too. Um, who else am I seeing on Damon Wayans, Bernie? Man, I like this is unbelievable. John Vernon too, like fantastic stuff. Uh, so check that out. Dads are cool com, And we will continue to follow you on the X machine at CPA stacks. Uh, Danelle, you had a fantastic season last year. I hope it continues this year. Keep up all the great work. Thanks so much for making us a part of your Super Bowl weekend. Enjoy the game on Sunday and enjoy drafting season, my friend. Thank you, guys. Hope you guys have a great weekend and enjoy the game. Thank you. Appreciate it, Danelle. See you later. Bye. That is Danelle Anthony, ladies and gentlemen. The fifth-place finisher in the 2023 FFPC Superflex Never Too Early Best Ball Tournament number 3. So glad to have him aboard tonight. Um, A guy who does know his stuff. And, Farrell, I'll be honest with you. Anytime we can get a Superflex guy on, I think we should take full advantage because my Superflex chops – are not anywhere near where they need to be uh, to, to, to host this show. And it's good to have Danelle on to, to help us through that for sure. Thank you, Danelle. I will get to, let's see, what do we got left here? Yeah, we definitely got time for emails. Thank God. The emails always pile up and I apologize. We can't always get to them. Uh, let's go first to Burr Ridge, Illinois. That's where Jim is emailing us from. What's up, gentlemen? Is Aaron Jones in for a healthy bounce back season? Aaron Jones, who we don't know for sure if he's going to be back with Green Bay, but after I watched the postseason press conference and and read what a lot of the beat writers are saying, I'm like 90%, 95% that Jones is going to be a Packer next season. We saw what he was capable of at the end of the season, Farrell. Um, He really made that offense go. Um, And I think it was a record, a career high for him, five straight 100-yard rushing games to end the season. He's running back 19 at the 606. The thing I got to be careful with here, I don't want the end of the season to poison my mind and think that that's what I'm in for in his age 30 season next year, given that he missed a ton of time with uh, a soft tissue injury that cost him twice during the season. So I think that's the thing we have to keep in mind here. Aaron Jones looked awesome when he's healthy. How healthy is he going to be when he's already been struggling with hamstring issues in 2022 and 2023? He's got an off season. He's got a physical therapy team. He's got a training staff. And maybe for once in the last couple of years, he'll have some good luck. And, and with that, I think that sixth round draft pick is not a risk for this player, especially in this format, because you're going to get something out of him. And Balky, you have to look long and hard in the, in the league to find five running backs with a hundred plus yards. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, and, and that that's a badge of honor. So I'm all for uh, Jones at that price. He's actually going behind Josh Jacobs, Kenneth Walker, Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, Ramondre Stevenson, and Ty J Spears is actually going mm. in front of Aaron Jones right now. So you could be right, Farrell. In this, in this format, 
he could be a nice little value for you right now. Um, going forward here, let's go to Chuck in Boston. Do <laughs> this is funny. Hi, fellas. Do we need to fade all the Steelers now that Arthur Smith is running their offense? Now, I yes. talked with uh, Dan Williamson about this last night um, on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Show on the Better Sports Network, mm -hmm. and he was of the opinion that he thinks it's status quo for both Jalen Warren and Najee Harris, especially considering – they're running back 29 and running back 31, respectively, in the never-too-early ADP right now. But, man, he was he's not excited about Johnson. He's not excited about Pickens. Although he did say it, 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 it can't get much worse than it was for Johnson in 2020. Oh, yeah, it can. Yep. This, despite the touchdowns that he had last year, which it was always the running joke that this guy could not score a touchdown. Um, but I want to get your thoughts. Uh, specifically on those four players, let's throw Fryer Muth in there as well. And I'd say throw the quarterback in there, but we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. There's your question right there. Um, offensive coordinators can can flourish despite their track record uh, under the uh, dispersal of a talented quarterback. We don't know. And, you know, one minute, this guy looks great. Uh, Pickett, uh, he's got a lot of respect, uh, but he doesn't live up to – the, those expectations, and I'm just saying, yeah, you, you, all of the players that you mentioned, even at 29 and 31, I guess you could take a risk at that running back position. But all of the players you mentioned at the wide receiver position, I don't want to count on Johnson. I don't want to count on Pickens. Yes. You know, and they ruined what 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 happened this past year. We watched the situation ruin a fantastic tight end in Fryermuth. He had injury issues as well. It's just – it's a wait-and-see approach. Let's draft those players later if we see something we like. And, you know, even Arthur Smith can get a little religion. He might look at himself and say, you know what, i got to make some changes. I, you know, it didn't work. Let's do something different. So he might – that's how he moved to the head coach position by being able uh, to, to work as an OC. Maybe that's his calling. It could be. It very well could be. He was great in Tennessee, like you said. I mean, just really, really good what, what he was able to do there. Um, final – no, not final email. Let's do let's do the last two here. Uh, Charlie, Santa Rosa, California. How do you handle Nick Chubb in 2024? Thank you so much, Charlie. We appreciate the email. Nick Chubb, who obviously had that awful uh, ACL injury early on in the season, um, expected to make a full recovery, expected to be back with the Cleveland Browns as their number one running back this year. He is being drafted, Farrell, right now in the never too early tournament, all the way down at running back 27 at the 807. Kevin Stefanski just got named NFL Coach of the Year. He um, made a hodgepodge out of an offense um, that was led by what, four different quarterbacks during the season? Mm -hmm. And yet the guy who should be starting for them at running back this year is being drafted behind 26 other running backs. Mm -hmm. This is what we call a leading question. I feel like that's a great value uh, at this point in the draft. Nick Chubb in the middle of eighth round, sign me up. Yeah, we've, we've seen it. And um, even if this success does not continue on the offensive side of the ball, what you're going to get is you're going to get November and December in Cleveland when the running back means a whole heck of a lot based on what you're going to be encountering outside. Um yeah, Chubb is going to get his carries, and you know, let's just hope for for a recovery. But we, if you take that offense and you say that Chubb's going to carry the ball sixteen times a game, well, and you're in the eighth round, that's worth something. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, I think you're in really good shape. He won't be in the eighth round by the time we get to playing at Hollywood. No, and that's the thing is like you know, get him while you can. I mean, he's going behind uh, Brian Robinson, Javante Williams, Joe Mix. Mm -hmm. Think about this, Farrell. Think about this from last year to this year. You could get Joe Mixon, Austin Eckler, and Nick Chubb all between the mid seventh and mid eighth round in, yep. in drafts this year. It's just, it's wild to think about. Well, who yeah, do you I, like best of those three? I think I would like, mm, I well, you almost said it. <laughs> it's not Mixon. It's not Mixon. No. Um, I think it's prob, I think it's Eckler, and here's why. Yeah. Um, Eckler was a guy that I liked last year, and I don't think he's washed. Um, I know, he, you know, we've all seen the the gif of, or whatever of him, you know, running against the Packers, and he looked like he was in molasses. I don't think he's washed. What's intriguing to me is two two things. Number one is ADP. 
You don't have to sink a lot of draft capital to get in uh, to get into the business of Austin Eckler. And number two, the Jim Harbaugh factor. And, and the fact that um, Greg Roman is now going to be the offensive coordinator mm-hmm. there who loves running the ball. Like, yeah, I'll take a chance on Eckler there in the mid eight. It's close with Chubb. Mixon, it's just, I don't know, man. Like, it, it, that, that's really tough for me to get behind uh, at this point. I could be wrong. But that's the way I feel about it. There's, there's no coach in the NFL that wouldn't take Eckler and make him a center of his offense. And you, you take a look at what's going on with the Chargers. The Chargers almost have to. With, mm-hmm. with their current roster. Um, and there's a – yeah, I think I think Harbaugh is showing up to coach this roster that exists, and we'll see what's added through the draft. But, um, yeah, Eckler's probably got the highest bounce of that group coming back. Final email uh, comes in uh, from Kevin in Columbus, Georgia tonight. He writes, what's the impact of the Bears' offense this season with Shane Waldron coordinating? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this interview with Jackson Smith and Jigba um, at, at uh, Radio Row at the Super Bowl this week, but he was asked by some some Bears um, – um, I wouldn't say Bears, but like Chicago radio guys that were doing their show out there. And they asked like, okay, well, you worked with Shane Waldron that last season. Um, what what should uh, yeah. Bears fans expect? A and, and very awkward, like mm. uh, to the point where he, he had silence for a good two or three seconds, and then he said – is this live? And then, <laughs> and then he still couldn't, like, he tried to give him some confidence. Oh, he's going to be great with Justin. Justin's going to love him there. But it was really, really underwhelming. And and I think what's, what's compelling here is we don't know who the quarterback is going to be for the Bears. It could be Fields. It could be Caleb Williams. It could be somebody else. Like, we don't know. Um, but with Waldron coming over from Seattle to Chicago, is there any tangible fantasy advice that we can give um, knowing that while the coaching staff is in place in Chicago, the players are kind of in flux right now. You've got to learn this coaching staff. The whole group in the Bears building has to learn what this coaching staff wants. They don't know. And, you know, they're going to have meetings about it and try to figure it out. Um, the tight end uh, should be a featured player in this offense, but I don't believe he's a bargain based on the drafts uh, right now. And uh, I, there's just too much uncertainty here. Uh, just continue to see these players drop uh, and, and, and grab them later and because there's just way too much uncertainty with this team. I think they'll be a better team. I've been a Shane Waldron fan. Uh, if, he, if he's gotten a little bit too analytical and can't uh, – it, it can't form the kind of relationship with players where players are – responsive to him immediately when interviewed. But, you know, when we all get a microphone stuck in our face, sometimes we're not ready to say the right thing. We, we often say the wrong thing we, we, when we should possibly say nothing at all. But, you know, it goes back to you, if you can't say nothing nice, keep your mouth shut. And he did for about four seconds. I think yeah, he did. Four seconds. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Super Bowl, Farrell, if I can pin you down, uh, give me a final score of what's going to happen Sunday night. Oh, my goodness. I, I've been in – I've been in the dark about this one since the match was made, and I've reflected on it a little bit. Uh, Jeff Jackin's hanging in here. Stick your head in if you want, Jeff. There he is, Jeff Jackin. The uh, hey. you know we're going to review uh, the prop bets and see if we can get some fills out of there. We were at the Caesars today, and uh, the, uh, the ticket writers told us he says, you know, everyone is betting Kansas City, especially the bigger money but everyone is betting the props over on the 49ers. And he goes, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, you know, <laughs> but all they're, all they're doing is just riding the vest. It's, it's, I hope for an exciting game. I go back to 2020 with these two teams in 2020, 20, in 2020, in 2020, I, uh, I, I sit there with Drew Maselli watching the game, another great Maselli reference. And, you know, he says, you're betting against my Niners. I said, I hope they win for you, but I am taking the Chiefs because that's how much I believed in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. And I think we're going to look at a fascinating game and maybe we'll figure out uh, about the wagering part of it since we are having an event in a casino. Mm-hmm. We'll figure out the waging, wagering uh, part of it after the game starts. We, we might see something that we like and bet it that way but it i have no idea 
Uh, but I'll okay. I'll give you Kansas City thirty-five to thirty-one. Oh, okay. A, another high, a high scoring Super Bowl. Who wouldn't want to watch that? Uh, for who sure. wouldn't? And and who wouldn't want to watch uh, fuzzy, delayed Eric Balkman along with crystal clear and well spoken Farrell Elliott? I do apologize for the internet issues we had tonight on my end. Farrell, thank you so much for putting up with it. Uh, have a great weekend. I will be with you in spirit there. I can't wait to draft on midnight at midnight uh, tomorrow night. Uh, enjoy the Super Bowl. Can't wait to do this show with you again uh, the following Friday where we can talk about the game and so much more. We'll talk about it, and then we'll know that Christian McCaffrey gets drafted first in eight different drafts. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Farrell. Enjoy the game. See you, buddy. That is Farrell Elliott, the definitive commissioner of fantasy football. KFFSC.com is where to go for that. Uh, nothing up. Like I said, he, he sold out uh, for the big game weekend, but make sure that you're checking that periodically, especially when the main event schedule gets released uh, this year over at KFFSC.com. That will complete this evening's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. I do want to thank Farrell Elliott. I want to thank Danell Anthony, uh, the FFPC, Rob Bryce, and of course, each and every one of you. We will be back next Friday, 10 o'clock Eastern time. The 2023 FFPC Never Too Early Best Ball Tournament 14th place finisher Rick Brinson is actually going to hop aboard, talk a little bit about his draft so far this year. In case you missed it, the Road of Viz High Stakes Lowdown was back for the Season 9 premiere this past Tuesday. 15-time FFPC League champion Jared Hines and I chopped it up. We we talked a lot about the Never Too Early tournament. He's been involved in a lot of them too. Uh, so make sure you're watching that anywhere on the FFPC show, socials or the FFPC YouTube. That show will return uh, Tuesday night, March 5th at 10 p.m. Eastern time. In case you missed it, the High Stakes Fantasy Football Show was live on the Better Sports Network as well as the FFPC socials last night. You can re-watch it in any of those spots. Dan Williamson, the newly acquired Dan Williamson by Player Profiler, who is doing the uh, State of the Union Dynasty uh, article series, which you can check out. We actually talked about the AFC East one on the show last night. But a lot of great stuff with Dynasty and redraft and, and early drafting too. So check that out anywhere uh, you can on the FFPC socials as well as the Better Sports Network. T uh, 7 o'clock uh, next Thursday, we will go live again. Run to Daylight and the Sharp Best Ball Show host, Todd Burroughs, and I will be live from 7 to 9 uh, on those uh, same channels, BSN and the FFPC socials. MYFFPC.com is where to go for the Never Too Early Best Ball Tournaments, the Superflex, and the Classic. You can sign up $35 in the Superflex. That will get you a chance at a $10,000 grand prize. You can sign up for the, um, the Classic one. $125 entry fee there, but you can win a $25,000 grand prize. Those tournaments will shut off April 25th. All drafts will be completed by then. MyFFPC.com is where to go for that, as well as to pick up some Dynasty Orphan teams. Some as little as $1. Begin your Dynasty uh, quest today in building those juggernauts and carry, your, uh, carry, uh, carry those teams all the way to victory in uh, week 17 of the 2024 season. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this video, comment on it, share it with your friends and enemies, and get notified every, team, every time we go live. Thank you for watching, everybody. Your Super Bowl weekend officially starts now. This has been another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com. It was broadcast live and was watched around the world. Balky and Farrell will be back next week with more analysis, more interviews, and more advice from guests much smarter than they are. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk with you again next week. For what it's worth, I love Farrell, but I'm going to tell you this. I've been flying in the face of what everybody's been telling me all week. Originally, after the Lions and Niners game and after the Ravens-Chiefs game, I said, who has the best quarterback? Who has the best head coach? I'm going to answer Kansas City to both. However, I have seen a change in Kyle Shanahan, uh, a guy that was never able to come back from behind in the fourth quarter before. And look what he did against Green Bay. First time ever he came into a game losing in the fourth quarter, came away with the victory. Uh, he gets down 24-7 to in the NFC Championship game, comes back and wins 24-17. I think this is going to be a, a, a little bit less high scoring than a lot of people are, are expecting, maybe a lot less when you hear my final score. But I do think the Niners find a way to make more plays than the Chiefs down the stretch, as strange as that sounds. Brock Purdy's a big upgrade on Jimmy Garoppolo, and I think the Niners win. I got San Francisco 22, Kansas City 18. Still a close game, and I hope there's more scoring than that uh, just for entertainment's sake, but that's the way I see it. Uh, take with that what you will, and we will talk with you again 
next Friday, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Thanks for watching, everybody.